I'd like you to start, pick up mm -hmm. where you left off with your MoMA uh, talk. Mm -hmm. What's happened since then? Well, that was a few years ago. I mm -hmm. think that I spoke at the MoMA after the first year on the Mississippi, mm -hmm. which was summer of 2006. So it's been some years mm -hmm. since then. And um, we did a second summer along the Mississippi. We had started in Minneapolis and made it only to the Quad Cities. Mm -hmm. We picked up and did the Quad Cities to St. Louis where the project ended. Mm -hmm. And um, the following year, built a series of boats, came down the Hudson River to New York City. Yeah. And then this last summer, crossed the Adriatic to Venice. Well, that was that very was exciting. Uh, yeah. uh, I read all about that. Yeah. Uh, it, that's like a major voyage, isn't it? It was amazing. It was like kind of, I mean, it was so epically beautiful, sometimes life-threatening, always amazingly, you know, just one of those things that feels like it can't be real, mm -hmm. kind of to everyone involved, people who see you. Don't, are kind of, what? Mm -hmm. You know, and even you, you're like, did this, did I, you know, the first day that I was out and I drove the first day because I'm a sort of a terrible raft driver, but in the sea, it's fairly mm. easy. So yeah, I'm, up, yeah. I'm up driving, <laughs> you know, on this like second story seat on like a pile of garbage that we all built mm -hmm. out at sea, just like, is this real? <laughs> Can mm -hmm. this be real? <laughs> and, uh, and it was, it was so incredible. It was so incredible in arriving in Venice and finally going through the Grand Canal and like going into the armory and circling the island and it was amazing it was so really you, where wonderful. did you park outside the Gardini no we we generally parked on Chertoza Island mm -hmm. um, that was where we kind of lived um, and then we would sort of pull up various places our best for me the best place was a stop called Zatere which actually means raft mm -hmm. um, and that was where we really got to know a lot of local Venetian people and we would do shows and have big local audiences and mm -hmm. for me it was really sort of important to connect with Venetians because I just felt like these people understand boats and fantastical cities and if they can appreciate this then like we win, you know? <laughs> and oh, I mean, no. so many people would just be, Phoenicians would just be like, we've never seen anything like this in our lives, you know? And that was really special for me. There's never been anything like it. <laughs> that uh, we remember. <laughs> really? Uh, um, um, are you in contact with any other groups of crazy boat builders? Well, I just got a message actually two days ago from Papa Neutrino. Do you know anything about the floating neutrinos? I've heard of them, they, but I don't know anything they about them. They are my one of my hugest inspirations. Uh -huh. They have scrap rafted across the Atlantic Ocean. Oh, they kind of taught that, us. That's ballsy. Oh my god! I mean, it's <laughs> kind of insane. If yeah. You, you know, if you really want. <laughs> yeah, one storm. Um, they, those things don't look like they would hold together. They know well. they did. It was amazing, and uh -huh. you know, they're, they're they're quite genius in a lot of ways. Uh -huh. um, and they taught us our raft design, and, and we just owe a lot to them. And I got this message from Papa, and he says to my friend Connie, Connie, I need you to get in touch with Callie. I want to build the biggest raft in the world, and I want to take it all over the world. We're going to go everywhere. Ask if she wants in. Hey. <laughs> I was like, I'm not sure. Like, sounds really amazing. I don't know if it's what I'm up to right now. Well, I usually <laughs> respond positively, saying, in theory, I am. But <laughs> sounds like the best idea ever. Yeah. yeah. Call you back. It looks like you're, you ended up just having a ball on your mm -hmm. thing. Right? I mean, it's so much fun, but it is, it's kind of grueling in a way. It oh, really yeah. is. Um, living, and we were always at least 30 people. Mm -hmm. And it takes that many people to really crew those boats. Mm -hmm. At a certain point on the Rockaway, we got down to 18, and that was like a skeleton crew. Mm -hmm. um, so we were always at least 30 people. And, you know, it's, it's so much family and it's so much closeness, but then mm -hmm. it's also really difficult. Mm -hmm. And the, just the basic struggle for survival becomes such yeah. an issue of like navigating the boats, docking the boats, weathering storms, dealing with breakdowns, dealing mm -hmm. with each other, dealing with cooking, dealing with maintenance, dealing with just... But it bonds it. you all together, all of that. So much, and, yeah. And uh, so mm -hmm. it, it is a, uh, you have incredibly strong friends. Yeah. So do they just volunteer uh, out of excitement or does it take any convincing to get mm. them to do this? You know, it's a really special community of people as it is. You know, it's a, it's a, basically it's a community of people all over the world. You know, New Orleans, mm -hmm. I mean, sorry, all over the country, like mm -hmm. New Orleans, San Francisco, Minneapolis, mm -hmm. like these kind of groups that were all sort of working commonly and all kind of like trading people mm -hmm. sort of all over the country that's been, you know, kind of existing for mm -hmm. a long time. And so... And so it's not just anyone that you're that you're reaching out to, mm -hmm. and it's it's you know it's basically this 
group of people that's extremely skilled in all these kind of crackpot skills and mm -hmm. that, that are really dedicated to making all kinds of crazy projects happen that are all doing their own projects and that everyone kind of it's like this rotating crew of like hey I'm about to do this and you mm -hmm. come on everybody over here and then and then the guy who was the engineer on this project says hey I'm about to do this and he calls everyone over and so it's it's, it's a, a fairly specific group of people that's, that's, that's big and that's loose, but that at the same time is kind of... Experimental mariners uh, and, and, not, and, not, and not just mariners, but it's people who are doing mm -hmm. all different kinds of projects. It's, mm -hmm. you know, this year it's, you know, the, oh, one of the guys is, is working on um, homemade trains that let go, that do the abandoned rails in California. Nice. You know, and, and all, you know, every, all different kinds, you know, some people are puppeteers, some people are just mm -hmm. all different kinds of projects. Um, a lot of people from the bike clubs and just different things. How did you get involved with all of these groups? Brooklyn? I don't know. Okay, just, just a little bit at a time. You know, I just started to reach out to people. You know, it was like the first time I wanted to do um, a street party, actually. Mm -hmm. I was doing a lot of the street stuff, you know, billboard interventions. And yeah. it was one of those things where I started doing the wheat paste, and then I was doing the billboard interventions and different advertising interventions. And that sort of opened into this kind of question about public space and doing different kinds of interventions mm -hmm. in public space, which led to more kind of collective activities. Mm -hmm. And that led me to seek out other collectives. I think the first one that I went to was the Madagascar Institute, mm -hmm. who were in Brooklyn. Um, and they kind of showed me the ropes on a lot of collective actions. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and then from there, there's Black Label Bike Club and Flex Factory and just all these different, you know, bunch of groups in San Francisco. And, yeah. and sort of one to the other, you start to just tend to see the projects and get to know the people so what are, who work what are on the, the projects. So what are the, if you could generalize mm -hmm. in terms of the, um, the principal reason, uh, are there any general interests that these uh, individuals express? Uh, what are they trying to do collectively? Hmm. I think it's a little tough because although it is a f in a, some ways a really specific group, it is a wide, it is a pretty big diversity of... When you, when you say interventions, it sounds like situationist, cultural terrorism, or you're... Just... Yeah, yeah, that, definitely, all that. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's different people who are working on very kind of self-made culture and self-made, mm -hmm. you know, people who are different DIY communities, different punk communities, different, you know, intellectual communities who are, who are crossing paths in the way of just sort of creating your own world. Yeah, it's a, the basic format is to gather together uh, the most active doers yes, that you absolutely. know. Yes, absolutely. No slackers, no emotional no slackers. laggers, <laughs> no people who are so introspective and insecure that, oh, no. you know, they have to be convinced mm -hmm. to do stuff. No you convincing a, involved. No convincing involved <laughs> and only an occasional class clown. You have to be a really hard worker. Yeah. Sometimes you can slide by as just like a goof off, but like right. just for like a little comic relief. But no not too characters much of that. to liven up the place. So everybody's no, got to work. Some characters, but you definitely have to work. Mm -hmm. <laughs>